I was really uh, pleased to be able to put something together at, uh, uh, at the last sort of minute at conference about talking about apprenticeships and trading standards. So, you know, that's that's what we're looking at here today. Um, and uh, just to want to give you a little bit of a, a history first about where we are, where we, we've been, and also, you know, where we're going uh, in the in the future. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about uh, the apprenticeship we've got now in, in, in England, how that fits in with the qualification framework. Uh, then I want to be able to hand over the most important part of the day is to let you hear some of the experiences of the apprentices that have gone through that and what that means for them in regards to uh, their careers. Uh, and then uh, wrapping up, I'm going to ask uh, the chair of um, the Trading Standards Practitioner Steering Group, the, the next sort of stage, the level six uh, apprenticeship to, to uh, give you an update on where we are with that and what's, what's happening there. So that program, We'll try and get you out for 10 past 12 before uh, you're all invited, I hope you know, to the new to profession uh, drinks reception upstairs in the accent reception area, number one, I believe. So all welcome up there afterwards where we can continue the conversations and speak to the training providers. And uh, I think we've got the, you know, the uh, endpoint assessment uh, organisations that we have here today. Right, so. Moving on, uh, 2007, I uh, joined CTSI as Head of Education and uh, Qualifications. And apart from the impossible task that seemed at the time to implement the Trading Standards Qualification Framework, I had two other main issues that we, we'd come across quite quickly. And the qualification team, uh, if they were here today, would be able to uh, uh, agree with that point. One was that we kept on getting requests from schools, good requests, schools um, and uh, other organisations, career advisors. You know, we've got people who are interested in your, your profession. How did they get started? Well, our difficult answer back to them was, well, they've either got to get a job in local authority uh, or uh, we did have at that time uh, university courses. So it wasn't much, much of an option. So. Uh, we did look at uh, the apprenticeships uh, uh, system that was there and, um, you know, I'll talk to you a little bit about that. The other issue was, you know, CTSI, we cover the whole of the UK. So we have four nations to think about and they uh, all have different uh, qualifications set up. So we need to make sure that we um, uh, keep that in mind as well. So uh, I, the, the qualification team myself, we approach different uh, sector skills councils that were then in, in England to try and uh, produce a, an apprenticeship and, uh, for trading standards. And, you know, twice we were sort of turned down. And then, amazingly enough, in 2015, uh, a head of service, uh, Rob Taylor in the room, approached us and said, oh, have you heard about this trailblazer apprenticeship going on? And I said, fantastic, let's have a look into it. And, you know, after many, many years, uh, uh, of sweat and, and toil, and also uh, really pleased to uh, to see Ops, uh, the, the Office of Product Safety here today because they did support at that time, uh, you know, the development of the what is now called the Regulatory Compliance Officer. So in 2016, we managed to, to start that process and 2018, uh, it was fantastic that we managed to go uh, live with that programme and you'll hear a little bit more from uh, CSA today about that. But I need to, to get over the fact that this was specifically to help us recruit new persons into the profession. Okay, And more importantly now, you know, with a qualification review going on and looking at uh, the uh, race and equalities and diversity that we really need in our profession now, how are we going to hopefully use this, uh, you know, this source, this way in the future to encourage, you know, different uh, diverse uh, groups into our profession to be able to make sure that we are representative of the communities that we, that we work for. Uh, what was really good at the time as well, during that period, of, of building the RCO, we worked with the CTSI qualifications team, and we managed to to get to the situation where uh, RCO apprentices now can get credits 
within the CTSI professional qualification. And it's the, the, the information is all on our website. Uh, just to quickly review that, with stage one, uh, an RCA uh, apprentice will be able to get credits, full credits for unit one, the regulatory environment uh, and enforcement, unit two, business and consumer legal framework, and unit three, their 2000 word project um, is allowed to be taken into account as long as it has something to do with trading standards and that the uh, candidate then has to take the uh, trading standards law part one. After that, they, they have full credit into stage one into the, um, the CPFC. So that's, it's really good. And that's what we're hoping to continue to achieve uh, in the future. Very briefly then, just a quick update. You might not be aware, the uh, MHCLG, Ministry for Housing, Communities and Local Government, now called, I've had to put the new name down, Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities. Um, uh, they, they conducted a review <coughs> of regulatory services in the last few months. You may be aware of that. One of the uh, recommendations that's come out of it is that this department requests from the Treasury in their spending review a bursary of £14 million to help local authorities uh, you know, take on apprentices. That's really good news. And uh, today, a letter has gone directly to Rishi Shunak from CTSI and uh, uh, CIH uh, jointly to, to make sure that they, they really, really do consider that. So hopefully that will really spark off and set off uh, the apprenticeship uh, uh, in, uh, in the future. Now, um, also, I mentioned earlier, we have got four nations. Uh, I've uh, invited uh, uh, speakers from Scotland and Wales to be with us today to give them uh, their update on that. Um, unfortunately, they're not able to make it, but they have given me updates, so I can just very briefly uh, discuss that. Um, Scotland, uh, having previously uh, built an apprenticeship, uh, it's been difficult to get off the ground, but I do know there's now talks between some of the training providers to be able to try and help them deliver that in the future. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but they're also now looking at working with the, the Scottish Government to build uh, a Masters in Administration and Regulatory Services. So they're not stopping still. They are trying to, to, to crack on to be able to deliver something for Scotland. And we'll be very happy to sort of uh, work with them on that in the future. For Wales, um, again, uh, the frameworks uh, is, is different there. Uh, however, uh, what they have to do is they have to have a qualification that's at the heart of apprenticeship uh, and they need to develop a, an apprenticeship with Careers Wales. Well, you'll be pleased to know that the Welsh uh, Government were approached uh, to seek uh, a creation of a level four apprenticeship in the similar lines to RCO. And as of last week, the Welsh Government have confirmed that they're acting on this business case um, and it should um, it should be in progress now to develop something like an RCO for um, So moving in the right direction. And you know, certainly CTSI would be both behind both of those to, to be able to do that. <coughs> With, um, with Northern Ireland, a little bit of a different case because our trading standards colleagues are in the civil service and uh, they have tremendous funds to be able to help uh, take on lots and lots of, of, of new people. I think this year, Damien there has been able to take on another 14 um, trainees. So that's that's really good news for, for, for uh, Northern Ireland. Right. Um, that's me for that's me for with my update. Be able to take sort of questions later. But what I really want to get to now is a little bit of the experiences that have that have happened. So uh, I am firstly going to call up uh, Kim McMillan from the CSA um, training provider that's been that's been delivering the RCO from the beginning. She's going to give us a, just a few minutes presentation on on their delivery. Uh, but also I wanted to talk about another. A government initiative that you might not be aware of, in case all fails with the MHCLG review, there's, a, there's an initiative called Kickstart, uh, which again also helps, uh, will help local authority to take on um, uh, apprentices. So I'll, I'd like to give her a few minutes on that. Uh, then I'll just uh, invite a few of the apprentices to come and give uh, uh, their, uh, it will be, pow be powerful 
uh, presentations. It was really good. I was in a presentation the other day where we had we had an apprenticeship uh, apprentice give a, a really powerful presentation about what this has meant and the ability now and the flexibility it's meant to to, to change careers and be in the career that they want. So I'd like you to hear that uh, as well. Uh, and we'll wrap up right at the end with uh, with Richard uh, talking about the trading standards practitioner.